This sort of thing doesn't qualify as a game. It's an experience, aka walking simulator. Without an objective or failed state, the only thing is for the player to decide when they've had enough. Not saying that's good or bad, but the label game should qualify some basic constructs and design concepts. I didn't really... Did I make an argument for it being a game in some particular way? Like, where did that come from? And further, what... What does the distinction really do? Outside of the exact thing you just described there, like, is there a benefit other than to signify a genre convention? Because the way I take it is kind of like, so if you don't like the content of a biography, it shouldn't be called a film. You know what I mean? If you find that that is, like, disqualifying because it doesn't contain subjective entertainment to the degree that you like, should you then disqualify it because it's not in a genre that feels like it fulfills that criteria for you? Does that make sense? Well, this is new. Oh, we got a floaty. That's what I was talking about. A little bit of dynamism goes a long way. I'm fine with engaging with that that whole discussion, by the way. I'm not, like, upset or anything. I'm just always curious to hear people's perspectives on it. A <laughs> blender donut. The heck? The lighting's going nutty in there. Oh, that bush almost scared me. Yeah, there's definitely a, an underlying atmosphere of tension here, even if it's not at all times. Oh, I love that I'm still finding new stuff in here. That's great. I think kind of one of my submissions of why I even got involved in having discussions about games on a regular basis is because I wanted to try to at least propose the argument that maybe there is another angle with which to look at games, that they're, in a way, just sort of another manifestation, another subclassification of art. And that they're actually much closer to a lot of other art forms than you would expect. We're just used to seeing them from one very particular sort of narrow categor categorization, if that makes sense. Um, so because we were kind of raised around a very particular dialogue about what is and isn't a game, we've gotten very used to seeing them in a very particular way. Um, and if you can kind of recontextualize that and look at games as a subject through the lens of art, suddenly the whole meaning changes a bit. And you don't really have to see them the same way. Uh, you don't have to worry about if they're mechanically focused in the same way or what. This is awesome. Just enjoying this wild shot here. That is a, a little terrifying for an angle on a slide, but you know, I'd probably give it a go. To me, it seems you're just, uh, you're walking around this while giving your thoughts, but would you ever say you were playing this? And I'm not saying this needs to be a narrative to be a game, but this almost treads the same space as tech demo IMO. See, again, you're, you're contextualizing it in terms of computers specifically. Like, a tech demo is referring to, like, showing you the specifications of an engine. And I'm saying this is sort of like a piece of installation art that you can walk through an exhibition and see. 
Um, and I'm saying that in a way, the distinction whether I'm playing it or not, like I am interacting with it in the same way that I would interact with this game if I was shooting at stuff. I'm just not shooting at stuff right now. You know, there are times in Doom when you simply walk around in hallways and look at walls. And I know that this doesn't really need to change your opinion or anything. I'm not trying to argue that you need to think differently about it, really. I'm just saying from my perspective, those things are closer than you might expect. Games are kind of just a set of mixed media that we happen to often look at in terms of like dopamine distributors that we do a thing and we get a reaction and we've got all of these very particular uh tropes that we tend to follow a lot like rpgs you know you level up in those first person shooters you click on things and they die um, but these are all just sort of traits that have come out over years and years of iterating on some of the same ideas but that doesn't mean there's anything intrinsically about those things that makes them more games than if you didn't do those particular things. So I'm kind of trying to pare back some of those specific moments in games and look at them from a broader perspective. You know, what's the difference between poetry and a novel? They're both literature in a way, right? And there's still plenty of meaning to be had and analysis to be gleaned. Um, and they're both equally valid as art forms. Like, I, I don't really know if at the core of it you're trying to say they're not valid, but I don't really know what the distinction you're looking for is if you want to try to draw that distinction. Does that all make sense? Am I... Am I coming across okay? I have a bit of a headache, so I don't know if I'm arguing particularly well today, or I might just be talking nonsense a little bit. I'm trying to be as coherent as I can. What makes words mean things? <laughs> I've actually very recently watched a debate about a similar topic to that. Yeah, the funny thing about words is they don't inherently ever mean anything. We've just attributed meaning to them. That's like a whole cathedral sound coming from there. I get games as art, but I feel there's a distinction about using the medium of gaming to create something. No, I think you just got it. You got the cart before the horse is what I'm saying. It's not that you're using the medium of gaming, it's that gaming is using art to produce those things. It's it's a category hierarchy, essentially. I, I'm probably not going to start making sense if I keep going down that road, though. Uh, sorry, let me finish reading what you said there. Like the bird museum you looked at a while ago. Oh, the, the bird museum? That was ages ago. Wasn't that? That was like two, three years ago, wasn't it? <laughs> I barely even remember that. Uh, it's not a game, it's a literal art museum created in a virtual world. I feel that the museum, the medium of gaming and what can be created with it can be considered a distinctly separate thing from a game. And I'm saying the word game is just a word that we've decided means what we decided it means in that moment. You know, where does that word begin and end? How do you exactly draw a distinction between what is and is not in that classification? And there isn't really a hard and fast answer to that. I've thought about it a lot over years and years. And the only conclusion I can come to is every game, no matter how robust or mechanically driven or artistically driven, whatever direction the person who created it wanted to go in, that is their choice to make. Just the same way as even if you really disagree with the concept of abstract art 
you know, the white canvases and such. Like, if you're not into that sort of thing, that's fair. You can not like it. And you can choose to engage with it as much or as little as you like. But I think it's all valid art. And the thing is, like, oh, that's, that's cool. It's about feeling things for me. Like, I'm, I'm about the experience of taking in these experiences, whatever they are. If that experience today is we're playing a multiplayer shooter where you're a duck, like, okay, that's what today's thing is right now in this moment. What can I take away from that? And even if it's sometimes a very superficial or vapid sort of statement at the core of it, I don't actually ultimately know what the creator's intent was in making that and how it ended up as it is. And you can say the same of white canvases. You may think that it means what you think it means because you've brought stuff to it. But until you're in the artist's head or until they explain their motivation, which they don't have any obligation to do, you know, it's all just in your own head. And that's at the core of what art is. It's about expressing yourself in all sorts of ways, even if they're uncomfortable or even if they seem superficial or even if they're just not for you. And I'm sorry if I I don't mean to sound so accusatory in this. It's just a conversation I've had a lot of times, and I, I can sound a little bit overly invested in it. But I don't mean to sound like I'm having a go at you specifically. It's just something that I like to talk about and get passionate about is all. Am I making sense? Does that all track for you, or, or do you disagree? I like to understand something like this as an experience. I could never call it a game. Granted, I'm not an authority that tells everyone what things are. And that's fine. You can say that as much as you like. I'm just explaining my perspective as it regards to the delineation and definitional quality of game versus experience. I think they're all game, and they're all experience. But if that doesn't mean anything for you, then that's fair. I'm very happy that I got up to the top of this slide. I did, or is this even that slide? It might not be. No, it's another slide that's quite a lot shorter. These are friends over here. <laughs> you know, they kind of remind me a little of a Garden of Banban characters. Which is a reference I didn't expect to make. Like, this is just a super cool spot. I really like this. This guy's a little shy. <laughs> Good stuff. I can't believe I'm still finding new stuff here. Hmm. This is the other side of a very long hallway, so I... I must have gone in this door? Yes. Now I'm not sure if there's more to see in this direction or not. I seem to be in some other area within this zone, though. No flashlight around anywhere. That intense noise in the darkness like that is especially creepy. I think that gaming as a medium deserves more things like essays and professional literature that examines these concepts, same as film, music, philosophy. It's too easy to dismiss games as time wasters and toys. Yeah, I mean, there is plenty of that going on. Uh, it's just harder to find than, well, a lot of things, because it tends to be dismissed in academic circles some of the time. And I think that's part of why the delineation I'm making is so important to me, because I, I do take it seriously on that level and wish that more people did. And it's been such a sort of misinformation campaign for decades of parents saying, you know, video games will rot your brain, there's nothing to them. 
It's just wasting your time. That people kind of internalized that, or some people internalized that, and decided, yeah, you know what? These are a waste of time. They're just for kids and nerds and losers and idiots and people who live in their mom's basement and all these sort of pejorative terms. And I just wanted to reject that whole concept from the very beginning. There was never a reason to even say that in the first place. It was all freaking control and manipulation of those people to bring those things up in the first place. There's nothing about games that's like that. They get to be the scapegoat of everybody's problems. You know, the satanic panics that keep coming up and the doom and mortal combat are making our kids violent and, you know, they're listening to Marilyn Manson, all this garbage. It's just scapegoated stuff. Like, none of that's based in anything. It's just scared people who don't understand human psychology deciding things. So, like, any of those factors have played into why academia doesn't take it seriously, because there's still lots of people all over the place who believe those things, even if not in a, as explicit a format as I just said. You know, there's many layers to any sort of hatred of a particular thing. And even if you don't espouse it directly, or even if you don't contribute to conversations that push that narrative forward, there are still angles where you might be contributing to it subtly, or you might not really understand the language that people use to perpetuate those sorts of things. So I kind of find that the best way to go about diffusing those questions is to just say it's all games and it's all good. I, it's sort of maybe a negative way to reframe it, but I guess I'm saying, is there a benefit to gatekeeping out some things from being games while others can be? What do we gain from that? And again, if the major delineation factor is in certain genres that are more mechanically driven, those are the things I gravitate to, then that's fine, but we already have delineations for those, and they're just the genres that we can refer to things by. Granted, I don't even think genres are really descriptive enough most of the time, and I, I prefer multiple genres if possible. Um, and sometimes games break genres, and sometimes games redefine genres. It's all an evolving language, so... There's not really, like, ever a great answer here. It's just, we're working with what we've got at the moment. So maybe that's a lot of why I'm so passionate about this conversation, because it's, it's more about... All of these people that never gave games a chance for all of these reasons that were never based in anything real anyway. Um, I don't want to see that perpetuated anymore. We've had enough. And we should be moving on and should have been moving on into more academic research and more adult discussion about these things. And I know that I, there's some self-reflection in the fact that I know I'm walking around in this sort of surreal bathhouse environment, talking about how important this is. And I know that in a real sense, it's not. It's not important. It's just an experience, as you said, that I decided it's important to call a game. Um, it's all very abstract. So at a core level, like, I do understand what you're saying. I'm not saying I don't. But I have a lot of inbuilt stuff that's kind of necessitating that I take it in a particular direction. Hopefully I haven't said anything really that controversial here, but... Well, if I have, I have, I guess.
No one ever came up with a better term for the genre of game called MOBA. Are there not sub-genres to MOBAs? I'm saying that genuinely, I don't really know. Um, I feel like there would be. Like, would you say there's... There's MOBAs that are more, like, RPG-driven versus more... Dexterity-driven? I don't really... I don't have the right language, I guess, to describe it. Yeah, no worries, of course. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> Maybe the one subject that I have the most background in discussing that I, I should be able to express well. Well, see, this is exactly what I mean by saying that genres aren't exactly always clear enough. Calling Overwatch a MOBA... I see where you're coming from, and I, you're far from the first person to do it. I kind of disagree that it's a MOBA, but I do see that it's got roots in MOBA language. And it might play closer to a MOBA than most other team-based shooters, not of which there are that many. Uh, but when you're kind of grasping at straws for a way to describe something, sometimes the most vague sense of parallel is the only thing you can jump to, right? Yeah, this is the arrow with the, the water I was trying to get to, but yeah, there's nothing here yet. I was kind of hoping maybe we could get down there somehow. Like the water would drain out? I don't know. I don't see the water draining out from places, though. It seems kind of static, unfortunately. At least not in the demo. But hey, I'm not complaining. The demo's been very generous. I was not expecting to get over an hour of walking around this facility. I mean, I was kind of hoping, but... I didn't count. Oh, it's this guy again. He's just gonna turn into a spider again, isn't he? I'd like to meet him. Fine. Woo! Those lights are so bright. Really have to try not to look directly at them. <clears throat> I guess if you think about it from another perspective, genres are meant to just be a kind of casual reference, like a tag, that we can associate with some common traits. But if games were so easily able to conform to genre delineations that that name by itself perfectly encapsulated the whole experience, then games would be so homogenized that they would almost be pointless. You know, if you could just say, that's a MOBA, and know exactly what you mean by that, I feel like so much value would be lost then because we would just be playing the same game over and over with different titles. You know what I mean? Like, the, the whole iteration in the process is building on things in different directions. That's what we do, and that's how this, this whole industry has gone for years and years. But that's why we keep stacking new sub-genres onto things. You know, we now have the name an extraction shooter which is now a unbelievably specific reference. You know, it's like sort of a battle royale, but like think of Escape from Tarkov. Which is a lot of inbuilt knowledge to have to bring to a thing, because I don't really even understand what it is. <laughs> I mean, I could take a stab at describing it, and maybe I'd be able to get close, but I really, even having played Tarkov, I still don't even know exactly what the contours of that genre are. But that's what we want, right? We don't want things homogenized to that extent. I mean, I seem to recall a lot of people being very upset that there are so many Assassin's Creed games that played it safe, and so many tower-based Ubisoft open-world sandbox games which, I'm not saying those aren't valid criticisms, they are, but we do want things that 
iterate in meaningful ways over time. I'm not sure we're going to find a flashlight. Doom is a survival horror. Survival horror in particular, that one genre is one of the hardest to pin down, at least for me. I think of Alone in the Dark, you know, the original DOS game as sort of a foundational aspect of what survival horror is. But I also don't think that at that point there was really much reason to try and put a genre to it yet. The closest we really had was, like, point-and-click adventures, and then it was just a very horror-themed, macabre point-and-click. Uh, so it's like a thriller action point-and-click game that ultimately evolved into sort of its own delineation. But obviously we aren't thinking of Alone in the Dark as the end-all be-all. I think a lot of folks would say probably like Resident Evil or Silent Hill uh, encapsulates that. But what is it specifically about those that acts as the flag bearer for that genre delineation. Is it, you know, the puzzle elements? Is it what you fight against? Is it the camera perspective? Is it the sort of evolving, almost Metroidvania quality to the way the map tends to work? Is it the sense of drama? Is it the story? There's so many ways that you could approach a genre like that. And I don't actually have any good answers, really. I just say, for the same reasons that I would say they're all experiences and they're all games, if something makes a claim to be survival horror, I mostly would take it seriously. Um, unless it's obviously a joke. You know, if you tried to tell me Proteus, the, uh, the nature walk game, was survival horror... I would give it a thought for a second and go, wait, is there like a secret double meaning to this that I haven't even thought about ever? And what might that be? But if there isn't, then how do you come to that conclusion? Is the horror in nihilism? Is it because it's a story about death? And then I'm just sort of projecting ideas onto what a genre might be, which is just not really... I mean, it's useful to me, maybe, but it's probably not really going to get anyone else anywhere. I just have... I've had this same conversation about survival horror a bunch of times, too, and I also don't really have a great framework for it. And because I've had games that are very much action games where people want to call them survival horror, and I've had games that are the opposite, uh, where people would think it would be survival horror, but it's actually action, or... Like, who cares? It's, it's horror if you want it to be horror, I guess. Because now you're actually, like, layering problems on top of each other, because what do you even call horror, then? Um, where, where do you draw the line between this is creepy and this is now a horror-focused game? It's, you know, very subjective. Definitely been in there. There might still be another door to my right that I haven't seen. Oh. Right, I don't think I've seen this. Maybe each one of those doors is its own spot? This looks like a flooded mall. <laughs> Probably what they were going for. It was like a mall fountain gone crazy. Like, the, the fountain kept building itself until it took over the building. 